Hello and welcome back to my channel yet again. And this particular presentation is going to extend the last one I did, which was on creating an Azure SQL database. Now, my name is Brian Kafiki, and I'm a, a data and AI solutions enabler. A lot of YouTube videos, please like, like subscribe, etc. And what I want to do is, um, as I mentioned, the last uh, video I did, which is a part of this series, the first one is creating an Azure SQL database. And one of the things you need to do when you create a database, obviously, is have credentials. You need user IDs and you need passwords. Now, if you haven't created an Azure SQL database before and you want to follow along, see my other video. I'll put the link at the end, but it's part of this whole uh, series. It's going to be a very short series, three videos, I believe, maybe four if it gets a little too long. This one is going to take the credentials we created to get to our Azure SQL database. You need an admin user ID and a password. And we're going to store that in Azure Key Vault. Now, Azure Key Vault is a really important service within Azure because it's where we can store really uh, store securely credentials, any kind of stuff that you don't want to just make available. If you deal with databases or blob storage or Azure Data Lake or anything where there's information used to access resources you want to make sure you're not just putting those out in what's called clear text. In other words, you got a text file. That could be a config file. Maybe it's not directly visible, but somebody can find it and just read what's there. Passwords, uh, could be blob storage, access keys, things like that. You don't want to leave that out there because one, obviously it's not secure, but the other is you'll have to, if you hard code that in different places, you're going to have to track it down and find out where you stored it and then change it. So it's got two bad uh, effects, but the most important one really is it's not a good security measure if you make it available. It's not too much different than putting a, you know, stick em tag on your computer that says password, you know, not helping a lot. So anyway, let's jump in. I'm going to show you I'm in the Azure portal and what I'm going to do is walk you through creating your very own Azure Key Vault. So first we're going to go in. I like to go here. Now, one of the things you'll notice is the database I created last time, AW YouTube, that's the server and AW AdventureWorks is a demo database that automatically got created for us. I'm going to say create a resource and I'm going to just type in key vault. And when I see it, I can just say key vault and you got this information here. I'm going to say create. I'm going to go down here. Pay as you go is my subscription. What I want to do is I'm going to create an Azure Key Vault. I talk about this every time I create a resource. I always create a separate resource group to hold a provisioned resource that I use in the portal. If I'm going to create a VM, I'm going to create an Azure SQL database, etc. I always create a separate resource group prefixed with RG underscore. So I'm going to do that here. RG underscore uh, YouTube Azure Key Vault. Okay. Hope I can remember that name. YouTube AKV. Great. Now for the Key Vault name, I'm just going to call it YouTube AKV. Fortunately, it is unique. If that is not unique within the region, maybe I think it's just the region, you'll get an error. But if you get an error on the name, you can either do things like just add some digits to the end or something, but you need to make it unique. So notice I say RG underscore YouTube AKV as your Key Vault. And then for the actual name of the Key Vault name, it's YouTube AKV. Again, the resource group may contain many resources that are part of supporting the Azure Key Vault. If I were to just go around, if I want to get rid of this later, if I were to just say delete the Azure Key Vault, I might leave other things around. Maybe there's a network card or maybe there's a VNet or some other piece and that can be left behind and I could end up still paying for it. So by creating a separate resource group for the asset, I can delete them all together. Great. <clears throat> now my region, I'm going to keep everything in the same region. A region should be, this is where you're creating your asset. Microsoft has regions all over the world. The East US is the one that's suitable for Boston, anything on the Eastern US coast. There's East US and East US too. I'm gonna to use East US. Now my Databricks, which I wanna use, I'm gonna use this later in Databricks to access Azure Key Vault so I can read a database. So I don't make sure they're all in the same region because otherwise when you go across regions, you have uh, latency and, and you can get into issues where something takes too long to access. It can also cost you more money transferring things because you're waiting. So I'm going to go with East US. Now the pricing tier is standard, um, but I can also pick, well, there's only a premium. And here's the interesting thing. If you use premium, you get HSM backed keys. Now quickly over here for a minute, you can see here in key vault pricing, it's actually an extremely cheap service because you're talking about 
three cents for every 10,000 transactions. So that seems pretty good because you're not normally going to be hitting credentials. You know, you don't do that for every database read. You don't do that every time. You probably just do it at the beginning, open up a connection to a database, give it the ID and password or blob storage. So that's pretty good. You're probably never going to go over that. So you won't be paying a lot. Now I'm looking at this and I don't see a big difference. In fact, I can't really see the difference in terms of pricing between premium and standard. So I'm going to, I might as well go with premium. Premium gives me this thing called HSM. These are hardware generated keys. There's a whole thing I read in there, but on them, but look them up. But HSM protected keys are considered, I guess, stronger encryption. They use hardware, et cetera. And Microsoft supports that. If you do use some of those, you can see there are probably, there are additional costs you could incur, um, but that's separate specifically to using those advanced keys, etc. But looks good to me. Take a look. It's available if you go in here. When you go into that, you can go in here and pricing tier and just click the link right there. Great. Now, soft delete. When you delete something, if you've seen this, if you know, on, for instance, on your own machine, you delete files. Typically, the files aren't really gone. They're just removed from the catalog. They're sort of flagged. And that does leave a security problem because files that you wanted to get rid of maybe have potentially um, personal identifying information. Maybe you have healthcare information on your local machine. Shame on you if you do, but I'm trying to give a good example or emails that you really want to get rid of. If you just did a soft delete on your machine, it actually doesn't purge them. So there are utilities on Windows machines you can get that will really physically purge like shredding your, your mail. And the same idea here. If you have soft delete and you enable it, then it allows you to delete an object, but it's not really gone and you can bring it back. I wouldn't generally use that. I'm just doing a demo here, so I'll leave it. But if I were using this for truly um, secure passwords and things, I'd probably go with more disabling that because leaving things around to me is a little worrisome. But research it yourself, see what makes sense. If you are, have soft delete, you have retention period of 90 days. So if you said, woo, I didn't want to delete that credential, I can bring it back. So that's the big advantage there. Um, purge protection, again, if I enable that, that's going to really get rid of it. It's not going to just soft delete and it's really gone. But anyway, those are the settings. I'm just going to use the basics here. I'm going to say review and create. Uh, let me see what I got here. Okay, I'm just looking at all the different things here. I think I have what I need. Looks good. So I'm just going to say now create. And as usual, you can see up here, the little bell selling, I'm telling me I'm creating an asset. It takes a few minutes. This should be pretty quick because there's not a lot to a key vault compared to something like an Azure SQL database or virtual machine. But we'll wait a couple of minutes until that gets created. Okay, now it got created. And one of the things you get up here is you can say go to resource or pin to dashboard. Sometimes this flashes by and it's kind of annoying when it does, but here I'm going to say pin to dashboard. And what's nice now is I can go to my dashboard and find my Azure Key Vault. And it seems to like putting these at the bottom. So there it is, my YouTube Azure Key Vault. Click on that to open it. And here I am now sitting in Azure Key Vault. What I need to do now is I have a place to securely store things. It's time to store something. Otherwise, there's not much use. There are a lot of ways you can use Azure Key Vault. As you can see, I can do certificates and things like that. Um, what I'm going to use is store a secret, which I'll use later. So I'm going to use secrets. And I'm going to generate an import, meaning I could load them or I could just create my own. So I'm going to say generate. And here you can say manual. Great. And what I want to do now is I'm going to enter a name for my resource. So this is going to now I only really need to technically secure the password, but I think it's a good idea to also secure the user ID because you can do that. And since you're calling the service and it's going to retrieve it, why not protect both? That's two parts that anybody who's going to hack into your system would need. So here I'm going to just, I think I have it ready to go paste. So my username is, and I did this wrong, so let me back up. The name of what I'm going to do is user ID. Okay. The value here is not showing. So you'll see that. And I kind of made an error there, but not a big deal. But ideally, you want to, I'm protecting the user ID as well. And the content type, I can just give it like a little description like, um, this is 
the admin user ID. Okay, that's something. If you go back to the other video on creating the Azure SQL database, you'll see that we had to give it a user login and a password for the admin account. Now I can set an activation date and expiration date, but I'm going to leave that and it's enabled, meaning yes, it can be used. So everything's good here. This is going to give me one of the pieces I need. I'll say create. And you can see now there it is. If I go into it, it's got this weird uh, GUID, but I can't actually see what it is anymore. I go back here. I'm going to say I'm going to need another one. This time I'm going to say this is my DB password. And the value here, I'll enter it in here. Okay. Kind of would be nice if you had two times to try that. Make sure you get it right. So the content type, uh, the database password. That's about it. Do the same thing, create. And now you can see, I'm telling us it's creating it it's pretty quick. Now we can see that we actually have now the database password and the user ID. We're good to go. That's all there is to as far as Key Vault. I could also be entering things like there's something called storage keys related to, say, Azure Blob Storage or Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 1 or Gen 2, all these different things. There's, there's a lot of different places where you have information needed to access things, and this is where you secure it. So it's not a real heavy duty kind of thing, but it's an extremely valuable thing from a security standpoint. With Databricks, it's particularly crucial because if you don't do things correctly, you do leave yourself open to certain vulnerabilities. So it's a good idea to use these things. For instance, you don't want to just be putting a database name, user ID, and password right out in your Databricks notebook. That would be a really bad idea. All right, so you've seen this here. I think that's all I really have to say. So this is a real quick video, but now you know how to create an Azure Key Vault. If you watched my other video, you saw how to create an Azure SQL uh, database. And next, we will see how to use these from Databricks using Databricks Secrets. So tune in for that. Please share, like, subscribe, and thank you.